Hey guys, uh, I was nominated for the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, and I also had to make a video on the properties of water for you guys. So I figured I would kill two birds with one stone, do it all in one video. So water is super cool. We need it for a lot of our biological functions, and a lot of organisms actually are made up of 70 to 95 percent of water. So we need it to cycle nutrients through our body, to excrete certain materials, to maintain osmosis in our cells. A lot of these things are really, really important. Woo! Not yet! Anyway guys, so that was the ice bucket part. <laughs> Um, if you're one of my biology students, stay tuned, we're going to keep learning about water. If you're not, you can keep watching too and learn a little something. Um, but if you want to go away now, that's fine. Um, thanks for watching. And also, if you really want to learn more about ALS, watch at the very end of the video and we'll do some biology on that too. Water is very important to a lot of biological processes. Now, before we get into the properties of water that make it so important, um, we need to go over a little bit of water vocabulary first. So, hydrophobic. Hydrophobic is an important word to know because there are certain materials that are hydrophobic, that are afraid of water. Hydro meaning water, phobic meaning afraid of, or phobia, fear. So if you have arachnophobia, you are afraid of spiders. Hydrophobia, you're afraid of water. Hydrophobic materials do not mesh well with, mesh well with water. Um, so I've got some water here, just colored green with some food coloring, and I put a little oil on top. And you can see what the oil is doing. It does not want to go with the water. It's hydrophobic. It's afraid of the water. Hydrophobic molecules. All right, there's also hydrophilic molecules, molecules that love water. Hydro meaning water, philic meaning loving, water loving. Something like salt meshes well with water. It's a hydrophilic molecule. Okay, so let's talk about these properties of water. First of all, water is wet. I'm sure you're thinking, duh, of course I know. Water is wet. Duh, water, wet. Yes. However, uh, this wetness is also a special property of water. Water is made of one big oxygen atom and two small hydrogens. So with those two hydrogens and one oxygen, um, together they're going to give us some very specific bonding properties. Now water molecules actually like to stick to each other and we call this cohesion. Cohesion. Now water also presents adhesion with other molecules and that's when other molecules like to stick to different molecules. So cohesion, molecules of the same type sticking together, adhesion, different molecules sticking to each other. It's also known as the universal solvent for polar and ionic molecules. Now water is polar, um, the oxygen is going to have a slightly negative charge and hydrogens will have a slightly positive charge, um, thus leading to the sticking togetherness. So because it is a solvent, lots of things can dissolve inside. Number three, water has a high surface tension. That means it's like to, it likes itself better than the air surrounding it. Property number four, water is liquid at room temperature. Water also has a very high boiling point, 100 degrees Celsius, super high. Um, Ice, as you can see, is less dense than water, and it floats. So for today, that's all you need to know about H2O. Stick around if you want to learn some more about ALS. See you later. So since I did the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, I figured I would tell you guys a little bit more about the biology behind amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, which is sometimes referred to as Lou Gehrig's disease, named after the baseball player Lou Gehrig. So ALS is going to be a neurodegenerative disease that's going to affect your motor neurons, um, both in the brain and in your spinal cord. So when these motor neurons die, the ability for your brain to control your muscles and their movement um, is lost. So unfortunately for an ALS patient, um, the disease gets worse and worse over time and eventually uh, they become completely paralyzed. So as these motor neurons slowly die off, they can't send the impulses to the muscle fibers that would um, normally help them to move. So here you can see um, two motor neurons, um, one which is normal and one which is diseased, and you can see the comparison of the skeletal muscle over there. So though we don't have any cures for ALS, so we, we do, do have, have um, certain FDA-approved drugs that can slow the progression of uh, the disease. There's also a lot of medical devices and therapies that can help manage the symptoms of ALS. So there's a lot of hope for patients of ALS. Wondering what causes ALS, um, 
about 5 to 10 percent of the cases are due to known genetic mutations. Um, and in these cases, another family member has ALS or related to disease or related mutation that they've passed on. The rest of the cases are sporadic, uh, meaning there's no known cause or there might be several genes into play or a new genetic mutation that's arrived in the individual. And now I nominate all of you to be good students in biology. All right, see you later.